we'll see if the floodgates open. Gersich on goal! Yes, sir! Shane Gersich makes it two! Strong performances don't always equate to results on the scoreboard, and that was the case again this weekend for UND. Glad to have you with us for another edition of North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. I'm Alex Sander. Coming up, we'll take you out to Kalamazoo for UND series against number eight Western Michigan. Look forward to the final regular season homestand of the year against Omaha and catch up with Jocelyn and Monique Lamaru one year out from their third Olympics, all alongside the head coach of North Dakota men's hockey, Brad Berry. And coach coming off. A bye week, last week a chance to get so many guys healthy and back and close to full strength. How much did your guys need and use that bye week they had last yeah, week? Yeah, I think we used it efficiently and our guys did need it, uh, you know, obviously uh, mentally and physically to try to reset. Uh, we got a lot of guys back, obviously Tyson Joes being one of them, and, uh, you know, we got a lot of good performances this weekend. Yeah, the NCHC did not slow down, of course, during your, your week without a game. I've kind of put you in fifth place in the standings in a tie with Omaha. A chance, though, against Western Michigan to pull even or pull ahead of the Broncos in the standings returned. A, a great chance to host home ice. It just wasn't meant to be, though, this weekend in California. Yeah, and again, like I said, uh, the biggest thing in our locker room is our guys remain strong, even though we didn't get the result that we wanted. And, uh, you know, we had the effort and the compete level that you you need to have to, to get wins. And again, uh, uh, things that you can control and things you can't control, I firmly believe we controlled a lot of it. And again, we got to make sure that we uh, uh, keep playing the same way and try to generate some offense. Yeah, certainly. Well, stick around. We're going to have the highlights from the weekend against Western Michigan when we come back. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. Welcome back. We're just beginning the conversation regarding this weekend's series against Western Michigan with head coach Brad Berry. And Brad, for the first time really in 2017, you almost had a full team healthy. A couple of guys still dealing with some injuries, but how nice to have the majority of your guys ready to go for this series against the Broncos. Yeah, it was good. You know, obviously with that open week, uh, got guys back and ready to play. And, uh, you know, it was, it was good in the fact that now we had some guys that could contribute in our lineup. Um, you know, it was a physical weekend. You know, yeah. we came out of it with a few bumps and bruises again here. So again, it's uh, about trying to get guys back again and get ready for the next week. Yeah, you mentioned Western Michigan, a physical series. Certainly the Broncos, the heaviest team in the nation. Again, they threw their weight around a bit this weekend in Kalamazoo as we go out to the Lawson Arena for game one on Friday. Western entering the weekend in third place in the NCHC standings on 29 points. UND not far behind with 26. You saw Tyson Jost in the lineup for the first time since January 20th. He would play a key role in this series, but it was the Broncos with a good early chance early on. Cam Johnson had to be sharp right from the start. Yeah, you know what, uh, gave up a two-on-one there, and obviously they didn't connect, but I thought we had some opportunities early in the game, like here had good net front, and pucks laying around, uh, just had to bang one home. Yeah, a little back and forth early, some good chances both ways. A little indicative here after the offsides, called Tinker Pullman takes the brunt of that hit from Mike McKee, and a little scrum happened. These two teams, it was a chippy start to this series, certainly on Friday. Yeah, you know what, it, it was a physical series, especially in that facility or that uh, venue there. It's a small rink, and a lot of things happen quickly. And yeah, we mentioned Cam Johnson being big this weekend. Ben Blacker was massive for Western Michigan all weekend long. A big save there and a decent chance from Shane Gersich going back the other direction. Another odd man rush. And again, Cam right there for the stop. Yep. Uh, you know, like I said, it's going back and forth. Uh, the one thing, it was a little bit open in the first couple periods there, but I think it tightened up as, uh, as the game went on. Minute 30 left in the first. Great shorthanded opportunity for UND. Rhett Gardner able to bury the feed from Trevor Olsen. A big finish there. Sixth of the year for Rhett. Yeah, really good play by Trevor. Uh, getting the puck over to, uh, to Rhett. And Rhett makes no mistake and, and uh, buries the goal. And that was big. I mean, it was, uh, it was what we wanted. We wanted a lead in the, in the game. Five, by the way, of Rhett's goals now coming on special teams this season. one nothing after one. Started the second, though, a big push from the Broncos right off the bat. Yeah, this is where I thought that we, uh, the first six or seven minutes of the beginning of the second period, we didn't manage a puck. Uh, it was great, and uh, they hemmed us in our zone a little bit, and they scored uh, to tie it up. Yeah, minute 11 into the period, Neil Goff firing one to just beat Cam Johnson. Every time I look at this, I just wonder how, how he wasn't able to make that stop right there on the glove. Saw it well. Yeah. Just couldn't hang on. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, unfortunate, uh, you know, because like I said, we played a pretty good first period, and then uh, they score right away in the second to turn the game around. A couple of minutes later, another goal here for Western Michigan. Michael Rebri finds it, able to beat Cam right at the top of the crease, 2-1 to one Western. Yeah, and this is where we uh, didn't take care of the earlier, didn't take care of the puck as far as dumping pucks in, and we got kind of caught in our end of the rink, and they, uh, they 
they capitalized on it. Yeah, big save there moments later from Cam to keep this a 2-1 hockey game. Western was sniffing around a little bit to try and extend that lead. UND, though, would fight back a really good answer from your guys after letting in that second goal. Yeah, you know, we had some good looks, uh, you know, uh, getting pucks to the net and good net front there. I know Shane Gerson has just missed one, uh, and then obviously Tyson Dose right here giving it back to Shane. So, again, we had some opportunities to tie it up. Yeah, end of the second period, really, it was all UND. Again, a lot of good chances to try and find a way. Shane this time hitting the crossbar, able to beat Blacker, but can't beat the pipe. That was kind of the way sometimes this offensive series went for you. Yeah, no, it is. And again, like I said, it's uh, it's frustrating the fact that we're not getting rewarded for the hard work. But again, uh, the only way that you get out of it is if you keep staying with it and grinding it out. Two to one Broncos after two. Great chance here for Colton Pullman. Another big save by Ben Blacker. 32 stops in the night for the freshman goaltender. Another chance here. Ludwig Hoff this time able to find the back of the net over to Cole Smith. Big goal there to tie it at two. Yeah, it was a really good play entering the zone. And, uh, you know, obviously going to the net is a big deal. Cole Smith goes to the net, gets a stick on the ice, and Ludwig makes a great play to put it on the stick. So that was an important goal. Yeah, that was at the 634 mark of the third. About seven minutes later, Western Michigan fires back and takes the lead. The captain, Sheldon Dry, is a nice move to be playing. Yeah, that was tough. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, we took over the game, scoring the tying goal, and then just a few minutes later, seven minutes later, uh, you know, a good player makes a good play. But, you know, like I said, I thought we responded after that, getting some good looks uh, right after they, they had the eventual game winner. Yeah, good attempt there by Tucker Pullman that gets knocked down. Nobody home, knocked down the rebound, and then with a couple of seconds remaining here, about a minute left or so, the empty net, Colt Conrad able to find it from his knees at center ice, and that was the, unfortunately, the last goal of the contest as Western Michigan takes this one 4-2 to, to beat North Dakota for the first time in Kalamazoo in program history. A tough result for the defending national champs. Here's what the guys had to say about it. I thought we played a great 53-54 uh, minutes, but obviously in that second period, they, uh, you know, I think they, they had about 10 to 12 shots in a five-minute uh, span that, that really uh, killed us tonight. You know, I thought we, we had the effort to win tonight, and unfortunately, that's the way the season's been going for us so far. We didn't play that good in the start of the second there, and they outchanged us and got a couple goals, but uh, the rest of the second and the whole third period is how we got to play tomorrow, and uh, we just got to overwhelm them and get pucks in that, and that's how we got to play. Tomorrow night, um, we're going to have to come with a playoff mentality. It's obviously huge for the national tournament and paralyzed, so... Um, we're gonna have to bring that Saturday night uh, road mentality on uh, with us, and everyone's gonna be have to everyone's gonna have to bring their highest level tomorrow. Western Michigan gets the 4-2 win in Game One, and Coach, you mentioned during the highlights, consistency. You know, has just been one of the things that has bitten this team a couple of times this season. That six-minute stretch at the start of the second period really proved to be the difference in this one. Yeah, you know what? We took a one-nothing lead after the first, uh, played a really good first period, and you knew they'd come out with a push. They did. Uh, we didn't manage pucks, and uh, again, that. That costs you by uh, giving up a couple of goals early in the second and changes the game, the complexion of the game. You know, I thought we battled back. Yeah. Uh, I thought we had a very good opportunity to tie the game and even win the game. And uh, again, it's one of those things where you, you got to learn from it and move forward. Yeah, tough one on Friday, but again, a response would come on Saturday. Stick around highlights from game two are coming up next. Welcome back. Well, after dropping a 4-2 decision against Western Michigan on Friday night, Coach Bradbury in North Dakota would look to get back on the winning track on Saturday. UND again just a win away from pulling back within three points of the Broncos in that third place spot and even taking over sole possession of fourth above St. Cloud State. Back to Lost and Ice Arena for game two in this one. Cam Johnson back in goal after tasting defeat the previous night for the first time in his home state of Michigan in his collegiate career. Cam was good with 37 saves on Friday. He would be just as good on Saturday, but he would be tested early. A couple of turnovers, Coach, down in your end, kind of put your goalie in a tough spot in Western Michigan able to capitalize. Yeah, you know what? Uh, trying to break a puck out there. A puck went off our stick, and then obviously uh, Matt tonight, Capelli, who's a, a goal scorer, uh, makes no mistake and uh, scores a goal. Acapelli's 17th of the season, just four minutes in, made it one to nothing. About 10 minutes later, another identical chance here off the turnover in the defensive zone, and again, Acapelli takes advantage. Yeah, pretty reminiscent of uh, the first one. Uh, again, not getting a puck, uh, advancing a puck in the uh, in the off defensive zone, and again, uh, it costs us. Great response, though, again, from your side after the goal. You'd sustain pressure in the offensive zone, and you would test Ben Blacker on several occasions at the end of the first. A couple of really good chances there from Brock Best. So you kept the pressure on despite being down 2 nothing. Yeah, we did. You know, uh, the pushback and the response was good. You know, guys uh, got a lot of shots in that. They blocked a lot, but obviously their goaltender, uh, he was stellar. Yeah, shots end up even at 12 apiece in that first period. Still 2 nothing Broncos after one. 
Early days in the second, right off the face off, a big point shot from Taylor Fleming to get by half a dozen players and find the back of the Yeah, game. this was a tough goal. Uh, it was off, off an icing call, and uh, again, we give up a goal. But here's here's a response coming in, uh, right away after they scored the third. This is what we did eight seconds later is uh, get a puck to the net, and they made a great play uh, with uh, the uh, the Jost line. Yeah, how about that? Besser to Jost to Gersich right off the ensuing face off. <laughs> Officially nine seconds later after the Fleming goal, Shane with his league leading 19th strike of the year. Huge goal for you guys to get it to three yeah, to one. It is. It shows the character, the response of the guys that you know nothing phases you and you even become stronger after a goal scored against you. And you mentioned getting stronger and finding more confidence. You would outshoot Western Michigan 34 to 7 over the final two periods. A lot of good opportunities with net front presence, guys taking good shots. It was really an onslaught against this Ben Blacker. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty dominating performance the last couple periods here. And again, uh, you know, it is. It's, <laughs> it's frustrating the fact that, uh, you know, we weren't rewarded for it. But again, uh, again, our character is impeccable as far as what guys are here in North Dakota, and they battle right to the end. Yeah, the Broncos shot 20 or blocked 20 shots in this game, but you kept hacking away to the third. You get a power play to start the start of the period. A couple of good opportunities for Shane Gersich and Austin Baganski on the doorstep. Another just a series of great saves from their freshman goaltender. Yep, he uh, he uh, played the game of his life. Uh, again, we've seen that time and time again this year. But uh, again, our guys, uh, they're doing the right thing structurally and uh, they're battling their tails off. Yeah, Western would not have many chances throughout that third period, but they'd have a couple of decent ones. And Cam had to be good. Here's one opportunity. Wade Allison in a two-on-one situation. Cam comes up good. Yep, you know what, I, I think he's, uh, He's, he made some strong saves. I think he sees what the, the other young man at the other end of the rink is doing, and you know what? He, uh, he tried to do the same thing here, too, and he made some big saves for us. 1441 into the third. Big power play goal here for you. Tucker Pullman winding up on the one-timer from Brock Besser. Austin Baganti ends up getting credited with the tip in the end, but it makes this a 3-2 game and really game on from here. Yeah, we needed this one. Obviously, uh, you know, we had some good looks here uh, throughout the game, and finally uh, it had to take one off the post and in to, to get it. So, again, we're back in the game. Key safe here from Cam on the breakaway, able to shut down Griffin Molino. That kept it at 3-2, and then closing seconds, get a face-off win from Brock Besser, and then right on the doorstep, Baganti, a great feed to Brock, another big save with only four seconds. Slide. Yeah, well, again, like I said, it's, uh, it's it's a great opportunity there, guys. Uh, you know, six on five down, we made a great play to get it to the net, and uh, you know, obviously uh, the goaltender, the story of the game. Yeah, Black, story. Blacker's 44th and final save of the night preserves the three to two victory and the series sweep for the Broncos. I was really proud proud of how we played in there, and obviously the score doesn't reflect reflect that, but I mean, I really thought we played like a team today, and we're. We were family in there, and everybody cared, and everybody was dedicated the full 60 minutes. And I mean, those those two turnovers in the first there that kind of bit us, and we went down early. And I really thought we responded well, and we just pushed the whole game. And I thought we played a really sound 60 minutes. It's just gonna, you know, persistence and, and just heart. I think tonight, I think we really believe in each other, and you know, obviously the result wasn't there, but I saw the belief in each other, and we just gotta stick with that. I'm mean, going to be honest here, I really thought we played like a team that could win a national championship, even though the score didn't say that, and maybe our record doesn't say that, but I really thought we took a step forward today, and I mean, it's you can't get frustrated, you can't lose hope, and I know we're not losing hope in that dressing room at all. We're, we're still confident in our ability, and that's how it should be. Well, it's tough to beat the take out in Western Michigan, Coach, but at the same time, you heard from the guys there, everybody talking about just the belief that they still have that this team can still do something special this season. hundred percent, Alex. Uh, you know, we talked after the game, you know, we had a feeling, even though we didn't get a win out of Western Michigan, there was a feeling in the locker room that our group became stronger. There was a lot of care there. Uh, we did the right things for 120 minutes. A couple of things that uh, unfortunately went the other way, but uh, for the most part, our guys still believe. And you know, we're in as of now. We got to remain sure that we are continue to believe that we're in and that we played like we did in Western Michigan because we'll get the result eventually. A lot of our guys have have raised their levels, and again, uh, you need that at that time, this time of year. And again, we got to make sure that uh, to next week against Omaha that uh, we have that effort and even better. Yeah, you mentioned the Mavericks. They're coming to town again, the last regular season home stand of the season. You swept this Omaha team down in Baxter Arena by yeah. a combined score of 16-4 to back in early January. you got to expect Dean Blaze to probably have a response yeah. come this weekend. Yeah, those games are behind us. Uh, you know, obviously they learned from that. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gotten better from that. Uh, we have to remember that we're not going to have those games coming in here. These are playoff games. These are going to be tight games. They're going to be physical like they were in Western Michigan. And uh, we're going to have to make sure that 
we're going to have to squeeze and, and uh, games out to win here. Yeah, these games are vital certainly for you moving forward, Coach. Yeah. Best of luck against yep. them this weekend. A lot of optimism still and a lot to play for for this North Dakota team. 100 percent. We have belief and again, uh, we have a group here that's uh, high character and a high compete level. And again, uh, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll be at it on Friday night. Yeah, you bet. We're looking forward to it, Coach. Thanks again for the time. Best of luck. Thanks, Alex. Coming up in a moment, we're going to catch up with Jocelyn and Monique Lamru and tell you their story ahead of their third Olympics. Welcome back. Well, Jocelyn Lamaru Davison and Monique Lamaru Mirando are two icons of women's hockey, not just in North Dakota, but around the world. The twin sisters from Grand Forks have been staples in the USA hockey scene over the last two Olympic cycles, and they're prepared to make this coming Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, their last. With more on the Lamaru kids, here's our Katie Hale. I'm here with two of the most recognizable names and faces, not only within our own hockey community, but really around the world in general. Uh, Two-time Olympians, world champions several times over, Monique and Jocelyn Lamoureux, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having us, Katie. And you're very welcome. We are here to talk about a pretty unique fundraising effort that the Ralph Ingleset Arena has undertaken. Um, you're looking to your third Olympic Games, which is pretty phenomenal in and of itself, the quest for the elusive gold, and you want your family there to cheer you on. Mm -hmm. uh, here we are in Grand Forks, North Dakota, where it all began. It's where you guys are training right now for 2018. Talk a little bit about this community and how it's helped you along the way. Well, I think, you know, Monique and I are very fortunate to be able to come back and really set up uh, a training scenario where it's really allowed us to thrive. And the Ralph has been a great support for us. Uh, you know, they let us get on the ice and pretty much, you know, whenever the ice is available. So we're very appreciative of them just supporting us uh, every single year. And then, uh, you know, we train where we work over at uh, All True Exos. Um, and so we have a great training environment there. So we're just really fortunate to have the scenario we do uh, and the scenario we've had for the last couple of years. And you guys, you mentioned where you're, you're training. It's also your full-time job, Monique, mm -hmm. your husband is working alongside yeah. both of you as well. A family affair, uh, no less, but there's a, there's a lot of training involved in that and a full-time job to boot. Talk a little bit about, um, and dispel maybe the myth that people think women's hockey, they make all this money in sponsorship yeah. dollars and, and what it takes really to try and get to the, the Olympics a third time around. Yeah, it's, I think a lot, and not just female hockey players, but most Olympic sports in general, uh, there's, I think, a misnomer that we make a, a lot of money, especially on non-Olympic years. It, it's just simply not the case. And so uh, Joss and I have a scenario where we're able to work and make money and then train. And so it's, it's a good setup for us. And if we were in a big city, we probably wouldn't be able to make that work with traffic and whatnot. But um, it's been... Uh, quite the journey this last three years being able to juggle both and, and pursue our professional careers beyond hockey so it's uh, I think most people are really surprised when we tell them that it, the amount of training and then working on top of that and what goes into making it work as an athlete and uh, in our professional careers as well. I agree I was reading your schedule and I was exhausted just reading it so it's pretty <laughs> phenomenal although it doesn't surprise me knowing you two at all. Um, <laughs> I want to take you back to the 2014 Olympics, Sochi. It was your second Olympic Games. You were up two goals with five minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. Canada came back to win the gold. How much of that game played a part in your decision uh, to strive for another Olympics and to get that gold medal? I think, you know, regardless, I think if we would have won, we probably still would have played, but it might have changed uh, the scenarios and how we've kind of went about our last three years. But I think what's really motivated us since that is just our approach every single day on the ice, off the ice, uh, you know, lighter days, the mental focus that we put into it. And it's really just totally changed our mental capacity to really challenge ourselves, not just physically, but really being dialed in every single time we have an opportunity to get better. Well, I think it'll be really fun for the fans um, to hear about this fundraising effort because they can help you out by buying some really cool shirts. There's three. You guys uh, play, helped with Jason at the Ralph to design them. Quotes have been, uh, motivational quotes have been a big part of what drive you every day. I know your mom did that for you guys growing up, would put quotes everywhere that you would read. And there's quotes on the back of these t-shirts. Tell us about how fans can get them. And you can buy these uh, shirts at the Sioux Shop or on SiouxShop.com. So we're, we're pretty excited to be partnering with the Ralph on this and Jody Hodgson's been a huge help. And so we're really excited to be working with them. Every dollar is going to you guys. They're not gonna make one cent off of this fundraiser. It's again, just in an effort to get your family there to help support you and uh, hopefully winning that gold medal uh, in the 2018 games. And that's pretty awesome. Monique, I'm gonna let you take this out. 
uh, be a part of our journey. We're trying to make it to our third Olympics and trying to go for that quest for gold and be North Dakota's first Olympic gold medalist and back to you guys. Thanks, Monique. Well, Jocelyn and Monique's t-shirts will be on sale beginning this Friday at the Ralph Engelstad Arena Sioux Shop. And again, all proceeds will go to help their family make it to South Korea to watch the girls play in their final Olympics. A little closer to home, North Dakota getting set to take on Omaha this weekend. We'll preview the series against the Mavericks when we come back. North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry on Midco Sports Network is presented by the University of North Dakota. North Dakota's quest to host a conference tournament series for the 15th straight year will greatly depend on how they fare this weekend against the Omaha Mavericks, the team they're currently tied with in fifth place in the NCHC standings. UND beat the Mavs 9-1 and 7-3 in Omaha in early January and would dearly love to hit those heights again this weekend. The puck drops Friday at 7.30 p.m. and Saturday at 7 p.m. in the final regular season home series at the REA. And if you can't make it in person, we will have both games for you live here on Midcoast Sports Network. We hope you join us this weekend and again next Tuesday night for another edition of North Dakota Hockey with Brad Berry. Until then, I'm Alex Seinert. I'll see you at the Ralph.